Ron Six has been working on this for about six years. And what it is, is it's an entirely new uh, processor for us. So it's completely new AMP model. It's, to me, the probably the, the most powerful statement Line 6 has made since we came out about 20 years ago. So as, as far as you know, what it can do and, and what it can process. So the first thing when you look at it, it's extremely heavy duty. It's about 15 pounds. What, what is that in kilos? A lot. Not <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 400. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? Small. Yeah, it's two of them. So, so it's, it's extremely heavy duty. You'll notice that uh, right away, every, every button here has a customizable scribble strip above it that you can write, you can customize this to whatever you want it to be. You can custom color anything that you want it to be. Line 6 products traditionally have a color code, like green is delay, blue is modulation, but you can make up anything you want. You can rename these however you want. So, for example, when you take a look at a preset here, you see all these little symbols here. We actually have, um, you know, I can just hit buttons here and you'll notice, you know, the things will light up here. But to me, the, the, the ease of use is just incredibly powerful. So, this is actually kind of hard to hold and, and point. Do you want me to hold it? If you would. Sure. How about that? Oh, thank you. Good. <laughs> No, so, okay. right. Right. so you, if you've ever seen Pod HD 500, you know, it, it's a great product, but a lot of modeling, you have to kind of dive through menus to get down and see like everything that's, that's happening below. The one thing, one of the biggest things we tried to get away from was menu diving. So just to show you how this works, the, the basic idea is we just use this joystick to go wherever we want. For example, there's my amp. So if I want to change my amp, all I have to do is I press on the joystick, and now I have all these different amps available to me here. So for example, let's say I want to pick that amp. I just hit enter, and now I have all of my, basically the face controls of the amp, but you'll notice I have multiple pages as well. So for example, I want to go in and I want to take a look at the power amp section, all I have to do is page over, and now I have all my controls for my power amp. Page over again, and all of a sudden I have my cabinet, which I can change just by turning this knob here. Here I have my microphone. Remember with the Firehawk we have four amp microphones? Here we have 16 different microphones. So a lot of really cool condenser microphones, ribbon microphones, and so on. Uh, I can control my distance, anything from 1 inch to 12 inches away. And it's in half inch increments, so it's extremely accurate. And then I also have um, built in EQing and then overall level control. So I'm going to have that level of control on every effect, every amp, every model. Is that I, power amp level as opposed to master level? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so for example, like. So you can get some power, like push power and gain, then drop the volume there if you wanted to. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what, on the second page, that's what this master is here. Cool. So another really cool thing that you can do, you know, so it's incredibly real feeling and sounding. Unfortunately, we don't have time to, to plug everything in. But uh, the other thing that, to me that's really neat is, is it's just really smart and tons of control. So just to give you an idea, for example, I want to maybe you know, take that chorus pedal, but I want to edit that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push this button here. Um, so now I'm in my edit mode. Now, for example, let's say I want to edit that chorus pedal. You know, normally you have to dive in through five menus, right? Check this out. All you have to do is touch yeah, yeah. the button, and it's what's called touch capacitive, so it actually is sensing heat from your hand. So you, let's say I want to edit this reverb, I just touch it, and you'll notice everything just switches up here. So it's super fast, you know, if you, whatever you want to edit, you just touch it, and everything is going to be right here. Here's where it gets kind of freaky. Let's say I want to edit it when I'm playing my guitar. I'm like, oh, the reverb is totally wacky. I've got to go in and fix it. So what you can do is you can hold this for two seconds. And now you'll notice that everything that's in this signal path will light up here. So let's say the reverb is what I want to go for. So I'm going to hit that. And now all of your parameters for the reverb show up here, but they also show up here. 
And now, if I want to make a massive, I want to make a massive change, like for example, mix. <clears throat> what I would do is I would just, you know, so remember, I'm playing while I'm doing this. I hit mix, and now I can just change it on the foot controller. Yeah. And you're going to see it. It'll give you the value right there, so it's nice and big, and you can see what's happening there. But let's say, let's say I kind of like got into the ballpark, and now I just need to make some tweaks. I can just hit the minimum and maximum values, and you'll notice that it will, it will tell me that in one percent increments as I go through. Can you so do, it, do everything with the foot? Yeah. Yep. You can do everything while you're playing. Mm. You know, and that's again, you know, the whole idea of control. You know, giving control to people as they're actually playing so it, it's it can be as simple as you want it to be it could be just an amp and a reverb and that's it or it can be extremely complex so for here, maybe lean that back just a hair uh, so for example one thing like Jimi Hendrix loved to do was, was he would use a, a one a 160 and he would use a 67 a lot of times at the same time so one thing we could do uh, let's say I want to emulate that well I can run actually run up to four completely separate signal paths in the stereo if I want them to be. So, for example here, I want to make that a parallel to this. All I have to do is hit this and notice how it just created a totally separate signal path. And now I want to make that an amplifier. Or I just want to make it a cabinet actually. So for example, I can go over and just go to where it says cab and now I could pick you know, any one of these cabinets any speaker combination and then I can go in here and put any microphone combination so you can run up to four amplifiers simultaneously off of one input you could run one head with eight different cabinets and eight different microphones or any you know two amps with a ton of effects it has what we call variable DSP. So, so some some uh, high-end amp modelers will actually dedicate one chip to just amp modeling and one chip to just effects, which is cool, but that limits you to two amps. So what we do is we give you the same two chips, but we don't give you any limitations. So you could do four amps and almost no effects, or you could have one amp with a ton of effects and four different amps. It just will, you know, again, try to be as flexible as possible. With my X3, I used to be able to run myself and the bass player at the same mm -hmm. time. Same functionality. Still you could run up to four inputs with this if you wanted. Four. Yeah, you could have four. Get two more bass players. If, if you wanted two more <laughs> bass players. No, I've got a guitar and a bass player. We're trying to make two out of them. Yeah, yeah. And, and you could definitely do that. Yeah, so uh, for, for studio, for people who are doing home recording, you can do... Um, it has a... a t here, let's, let's actually just turn it off and flip it around so people can... Sure. What do you want? Here, I'm just going to turn this, just turn it around. So for the people who say, you know, I need lots of studio connectability. Well, you have... The power's not going to reach to yeah, that's fine. Just, yeah, just leave it, that's fine. Um, so you have uh, USB con for control, you have uh, AES, EBU, you have SPDIF. These are all like super high-end studio connections. Uh, MIDI for control. Uh, one of the things that I thought was really cool is you have external expression pedals. Like sometimes people like to use external expressions for certain things. You can connect up to two externals along with the onboard. It has what's called CV control, which is control voltage. You know, so some people who have like old, you know, these old messes, yeah, smiling, <laughs> ooh. Uh, that's good. So, so for CV control that's built in. You can even control um, an amplifier. So if, if you're going to use this in conjunction with an amplifier and you want to be able to switch the channels on your amplifier, you can connect it through this quarter inch and then a side up the switch here. In, or build it into your presets if you want a clean exactly. preset and a distortion one, it can change your preamp on your actual valve. Exactly. Right. Uh, you also have four external effects loops. So, so for people who have you know really rare, unique pedals that, that is just part of their sound and they can't live without them, you can have those pedals connected and just turned on and then assign different effect loops to each one of those pedals and just turn things on and off at, at will. So yeah, it's... Uh, Quarter inch outs, stereo outs, of course, and then um, XLR outputs. Like so, today I was running microphone cables basically out. It's just a little bit more uh, more powerful output signal, so you obviously have that same capability as well. So, so that's the, the really brief rundown.